Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Finding Missing Angles. This is part one. We also call this lesson uh, Understanding Complementary Angles and Supplementary Angles. So this is more of a geometry lesson, but it's really, you know, it gives a lot of students problems, but I promise we're going to break it down so it's very, very simple. The names complementary and supplementary angles come up a lot. They have big words. They seem difficult. We're going to make it very, very simple for you. First, let's go back and talk about a 90 degree angle. We've been using 90 degree angles a lot, and we have a 90 degree angle right here. Now forget about this, this uh, line right here. Just forget about that. Look at this uh, ray connected at a vertex here to this ray. These are what we call 90 degrees here. And the reason you know it's 90 degrees is because there's the square thing in the corner. So again, forget about this ray, just forget about it. They, we have a, a little square in the corner, and that means that it's an exact measure of 90 degrees, right? That 90 degree angle has a special name. We call it a right angle. So this is a right angle, right? Now, we understand the concept of a right angle. We need to talk about what we call a complementary angle, right? It sounds hard. It's very, very simple. All it means is that if we know that this measure of the angle is 90 degrees, right? So I can actually draw it here. We know that the measure here, this entire angle here that goes from here to here because we're measuring all the way from here to here, we know that this thing is 90 degrees. How do we know? Because we have this little symbol in the corner. Right? So if it's 90 degrees, then it means that the measure of this angle, number one, measured from this ray to this ray, plus whatever the measure of this ray's angle is to this ray, we add this angle and add it to this angle, it has to be equal to 90 degrees. How do we know? Because we know that it's a right angle which has a, a measure of 90 degrees. So all it's basically saying is that if you know what the total angle measure is and it's 90 degrees, then if you split that angle into two smaller angles, if you like chop it up, then you know that if you add these two, in, these two inner angles together, they must equal 90 degrees. When you have two angles that add up and equal 90 degrees, we call it a complementary angle. This is not a compliment like giving somebody a compliment like, hey, your hair's nice or your shoes look good today. It's not that kind of compliment. In geometry and math, we call a complementary angle angles that add to 90 degrees. So this thing down here looks really complicated, but now that you know what it means in words, it's not complicated. This means the measure of angle one, that's what the M means, measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two, whatever these angles are, they must add up to be 90 degrees. Now we've drawn it so that this angle is cut in basically in half, almost in half. So angle one and angle two are gonna be about the same, but whatever angle one and two are, they must add to 90 degrees. So in your mind, when they add to 90 degrees, we call it a complementary angle. And then we also have learned that the overall angle, when we have this symbol in the corner, when it's exactly 90 degrees, is called a right angle. So right angle is whenever you have two smaller angles inside that are complementary, when they add up to 90 degrees, then the overall larger angle is what we call a right angle. And that is what we call complementary uh, smaller angles there when they add to 90. Now, we wanna talk about the other case. So we have a special name when an angle is 90 degrees. We call it a right angle. Now we also have a special name when the angle is exactly 180 degrees. Now if you think about it, forget about this part of the diagram. Forget about this. If you have an angle measure where it goes straight up and down, this is what we call 90 degrees. It goes straight up and down, perpendicular, exactly up and down is what we call 90 degrees. Now from this point, if we go another 90 degrees, then we're gonna be measuring an angle that doesn't stop here. It goes all the way, I want you to ignore this for now. It goes all the way to the kind of the other horizon. When you have two angles that are completely, or one angle that is like measured from one ray this way and one ray completely the opposite direction, that's called a 180 degree angle. Why? Because if you think about it, straight up and down is 90 degrees. So if I go another 90 degrees, 90 plus 90, 9 plus 9 is 18, right? 90 plus 90 is 180. So this entire angle that goes over here is actually 180 degrees. So I want to measure that by kind of drawing this right here. If I got a protractor out and measured the angle from this ray, there's a vertex here, all the way over here, this is 180 degrees. Now that angle of 180 has a special name. We call it a straight angle. Why do you think it's called a straight angle? Well, it's because the, the lines that make up the angle, or the rays that make up the angle form like a straight line like this. So a straight angle is a 180 degree angle. A right angle is a 90 degree angle. 
And of course, you have to put two 90 degree angles together to get the straight angle of 180 degrees. Now, if we know that this angle is 180 degrees, and if we chop this angle up into two smaller angles, angle number one and angle number two, then we know that whatever angle one is, if we add it to whatever angle two is, it must add up to 180 degrees because we know what the total angle is, right? So if we add up the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two and we get an angle of 180 degrees, then those are called supplementary angles. So the bottom line is supplementary angles are two angles so that when you put them together, they add up to exactly 180 degrees. Not 181, not 179, not 180.4. It has to add exactly to 180 degrees. Then we call them supplementary angles. If the two angles add up to exactly 90 degrees, we call them complementary angles. So these are important terms. Complementary angles are any two angles that add up to give you 90 degrees and supplementary angles are any two angles that add up to give you 180 degrees, right? And then we looked at the idea of a straight angle. A straight angle just means it's 180 degrees because it forms kind of this straight line when you measure the angle between them. A right angle, of course, is a 90 degree uh, angle that goes kind of up and down perpendicular like this. If you slice a right angle into smaller angles, then those angles are complementary to add up to 90. If you slice a straight angle into smaller angles, then those angles must add up to 180, which make, makes them supplementary. So that's all the background material, and all of that is gonna make the next part of the problems very, very simple. Let me give you a diagram like this. And I ask you, what is the measure of angle X? And when I say the measure of angle X, I don't mean like this whole thing. I mean the measure of angle X goes from here to this ray right there. How do I find that angle measure? Well, I could get a protractor and I can measure it, but we have enough information to figure it out just from the diagram. Because we know that this entire angle is what? This symbol means 100, I'm sorry, 90 degrees. So the measure of the angle from here all the way to here is 90 degrees. How do I know it's 90 degrees? It's because this symbol tells me that this angle is a 90 degree angle. And I know that this angle is 31 degrees. So if I start from 90 and I take away or subtract the 31 degrees from 90, then whatever is left over must be X. So what I have to do is say, well, I'm gonna start with 90 degrees and I'm gonna subtract away 31 degrees. It becomes a very simple subtraction problem. So what do we do? We try to say zero minus one. We can't do that, so we make this a 10. And to do it, we make the nine into an eight. 10 minus one is nine, and eight minus three is what? Five, five there. So what do we get? 59 degrees. The measure of angle X must be 59 degrees. How do we know it has to be 59 degrees? First of all, notice that 59 degrees is bigger than 31 degrees. That makes sense because the measure of this angle looks to be, from the drawing anyway, it looks to be a little bit bigger than uh, the angle over here. It's, it's wider like this, right? How do we know that that's correct? Let's just check it real quick. We know that if this is true, the 59 degree angle that we get, if we add it to the 31 degree angle, if we add it, we should get 90 because these are what we called complementary angles. Complementary means we add to 90. Nine plus one is 10. And then we have five, six, seven, eight, nine. And they add to 90 degrees, so we check. So when you have a diagram and you're asked to find a missing angle, most of the time, all you have to do is figure out what you need to subtract from what. And you have to know the idea of a complementary angle and a supplementary angle. So let's put some more of these diagrams on the board and get a little more practice. All right, so here's problem number two. We're looking for the measure of angle W. Angle W is the angle measured from this ray to this ray right here. What is that angle measure? How do we figure it out? Well, we know that the 26 degree angle here must be what we call supplementary to the angle W. Supplementary means they add up to 180 degrees. How do we know this? Because we know that this larger angle is a straight angle. It goes in measure from this ray all the way over to this. And we know it's a straight angle, not because there's a special symbol on the paper, but because it forms a straight line. When you have 
uh, an angle that is basically formed from a straight line like this, then you know it has to be 180 degrees. That's part of what we're learning here. So because the larger angle is 180 degrees, we'll just subtract off this 26 degree angle and figure out what is left over. So what we'll do then is we'll start with the 180 degree angle, the straight angle, the larger angle, and we'll subtract off this 26 degree angle, which is uh, smaller, and whatever is left over must be the measure of angle W. So let's do this subtraction. What is zero minus six? Well, we can't do that, so we borrow, make that a 10, and to do it, the eight then becomes a seven. So what is 10 minus six? 10 minus six is four, and seven minus two is five, and one minus zero is one. So the angle of measure W is 154 degrees. How did we know to do this? Well, we know that any straight angle is 180 degrees, and then we subtract off the 26 degree angle, whatever's left over, is the measure of angle W. And then we know that if we take the 154 and we add it to the 26, then we know we're gonna get 180 degrees. Try it on a separate sheet of paper because we know that these angles are supplementary to each other. Supplementary means they add to uh, 180 degrees. All right, let's take a look at problem three. We wanna find the measure of angle Z. How do we do it? Well, we know what this larger angle is. The larger angle is a 90 degree angle because of the symbol here. So we'll start with the measure of 90 degrees and we'll just subtract off the 72 degree angle here and whatever is left over must be Z. So we'll take the 90 degrees, we'll subtract the 72 degrees and see what we get. So zero minus two, this becomes a 10. The nine becomes an eight. The 10 minus two becomes an eight and a eight minus seven becomes a one. And so the angle Z becomes 18 degrees. Because we know if we start from 90 and we subtract 72, we get 18, which is a very small angle. It makes sense that this is much smaller because it looks to be a much smaller angle than the 72 degree angle here. And we know that 18 plus the 72 must equal the 90 because these are complementary angles. I, I keep saying the words over and over again because I want you to remember complementary means they add to 90, supplementary means they add to 180. All right, here's problem number four. What is the measure of angle V? Same thing, we have a straight angle here. This straight angle is 180 degrees. So we'll take the 180 and we'll subtract off the 119, which we are given there and whatever's left over We'll subtract the 119. Whatever's left over must be the missing angle V. So what do we have here? Zero minus nine. This becomes a 10. We borrow to make this a seven. And what do we have here? We have 10 minus nine is one. Seven minus one is six. And one minus one is zero. So the angle of measure V is 61 degrees. Measure of angle V is 61 degrees. All right, here's our last problem for this lesson. We wanna find the measure of angle H. We know that we have a straight angle, which is 180 degrees exactly, so start with 180 and subtract off the 65 degree angle. Here, whatever is left over must be H. 180 minus 65, what do we get? We have to borrow, this becomes a 10, this becomes a seven. And then we have 10 minus five is five, and seven minus six is one, and one minus zero is one. And so we get an answer of, let me just check myself here, 115 degrees, 115 degrees, the measure of angle H. Now, does it make sense? We're saying that the angle H is much bigger than this angle here, and it makes sense because this looks to be a larger angle than the 65 degree angle. And we know if we add the 115, with the 65, we're going to get 180 degrees because these are supplementary angles. So again, supplementary means the two angles add to 180, and complementary means the two angles add to 90, right? So you see the problems here become very simple once you know what to do, and that's what it always is in math. It's, it's hard in the beginning, but then once you know what to do, it becomes easier and easier. The only thing here you have to understand is what isn't a complementary set of angles and what is a supplementary set of angles, what's a straight angle, and what is a right angle. So make sure you can get these yourself, practice them, solve all of them yourself. Following on to part two, we'll get a little more practice.